What is up, my peeps? We are live here streaming from somewhere <laughs> in the Southwest. And uh, it's been a while. It's been two weeks. I apologize for the hiatus. Had a lot of things to do. I had slightly taken ill with some kind of summer flu virus thing. And then, and then I had a bunch of allergies and this, that, and the other. Anyways, we're back and it feels good to be back. Um, obviously, we were talking about John Varvatos or Varvatos, not Dark Rebel Rider, but Dark Rebel. This guy. Oops. Okay, what was that? Sorry, little perfume cat from a mini. It's got this, obviously, this corded, um, I don't know, nylon, rubber, plastic. Um, which appears to be, they really are separate. It's not just like a, a, a mold, you know, that looks separate 3D or they really are separate. And it looks like you can kind of take this thing off if you really wanted to. Well, I don't really want to, but anyways, has the um, sort of that uh, fleur de lis sign, heavy cap, eh, fairly heavy. Um, says John Varvatos, Varvatos, or Varvatos, if you want to say it, Dark Rebel. I've already applied it here and here. Before I go any further, let me say that that was not my scent of the day. Just FYI, not that I wouldn't do that, because I, <laughs> I wear what I want any time of the year. I don't really care about the season seasons convention, but this was my scent of the day. Baldessarini. This is... Uh, secret mission. If I can, where did I uh, get this cap off? Yeah, it says it right there. Secret mission. This, uh, funnily enough, was a tester, and I don't know where this cap came from. If anybody out there knows what this goes to, uh, uh, give me a heads up. But it fits almost perfectly. And honestly, once it gets on there. I think it looks darn good. It just it looks like it was made for it. So this is a really, really vastly, vastly underrated gem. If you like gentlemanly, sexy, sensual, sophisticated, slightly more grown up, but still very mysterious and um, just really, really well-rounded, well-crafted, get your nose on this, guys. This blows so many Hugo Bosses away. And the irony is, it is Hugo Boss. And they're by the Serini line. So I don't know why they can't uh, get some of their um, noses on to the Hugo Boss side, as it were. Because, man, the Balda Serini line, guys, it's just fantastic. I think that the bulk of what they've done with that line is just head and shoulders of most of the Hugo Boss stuff. I do like a lot of Hugo Boss. I'm not going to lie. There's some I don't. There's some I like. There's some that I really like. And there's some that I almost, well, it's not that I can't stand it. It's just that they have a lot of fragrances that just do next to nothing for me. They're just a bunch of, it's just a big giant nothing burger. So those are the Hugo Bosses that I would steer clear from. But they do have some good scents. I do think that the Bald Serena line is head and shoulders above most of the Hugo Boss offerings. Um, outside of the niche the upper tier products that they've come out with in the last, I don't know, six, five, six years, maybe seven at the most. Okay, but moving on, that was my scent of the day. That's again not what we're discussing. And uh, thanks for joining the live cast, Jerry. Uh, it's much appreciated. Yeah, I think my normal fan base, they haven't seen me in about two weeks and probably think I either, you know, I'm up in the hospital or, or fell off a cliff. Well, I did get sick, but I'm back now. It's all that counts. So no big. Again, we are discussing, for those just tuning in, John Varvatos or Varvatos, however you want to say it, Dark Rebel. Now, I have not personally bought a bottle yet of Rebel Rider. Um, I may, and I probably will. In fact, I'll probably round out my entire collection with all of the Varvatos or Varvatos line. I uh, haven't fully decided. So I'm not a real huge aquatics guy. I don't tend to like blues. Uh, too too much but there are now beginning to be a lot of blues that a lot of the uh, houses are releasing that tend to be more interesting than yesteryear's aquatics they're not just like a, 
a smooth, clean, freshy aquatic. They tend to have a little more going on, like ouds or vetiver, neroli, uh, blood orange, mandarin, coumarin, um, vanilla, amber. I mean, you name it, but they're, they're trying, at least they're trying something new. That's kind of refreshing to hear. But, okay, he says, boss, the scent sucks. <laughs> I've never tried it, Jerry. I have heard a lot of hate online or dislike for the fragrance online. Uh, let me ask you, have you tried the intense version? Boss, the scent. Is, isn't there an intense version? Or am I thinking of a different boss scent? At any rate, there, there's lots of bosses out there. Look, guys, you're never going to make everybody happy. And we all know that a lot of the Hugo Boss stuff is very, very disliked in frac com fragrance community for those that don't speak uh, fragrance parlance. Anyways, let's get back to this before I lose the thread. Uh, this, oh my God, this is so freaking phenomenal, guys. I know, yes, I'm late to the party. It is. what. First off, I'm a huge tobacco lover. And I'm not going to lie, not to sound all snooty or nose up in the air. Most of my tobacco fragrances are way more expensive than this. Most of them are niche. Uh, top tier designer, things like that. Uh, for whatever reason, starting several years ago, I would occasionally walk into a store, smell a John Varvatos or Varvatos uh, offering. And I thought, I always thought they were interesting and unique smelling. I never quite jibed with them uh, for at that time for whatever reason and uh, it's kind of sad it's my loss I think that we all change and grow as we get older um, it, it's just a reality of life anyone that denies it I think you're living in a fairy tale uh, a dream bubble taste change preferences change uh, the dollar bill changes the yin the yuan they're in the deutsche mark it all changes you know most of Europe went to the the Euro, which I think is so freaking stupid. Don't even get me started. I'm not trying to like delve into political talk or anything, but respectively, I think all the countries should have kept their, their own currencies. I think they would have been a lot better off. Even if Greece had sank into some kind of, uh, which they already did, they already sank into a, a financial. Anyways, I'm getting off here. I, I apologize. I'm getting off track. Let me stay. <laughs> Let me stick to perfume here. Um, you know, mine just wonders and I'm just like, yeah. Okay. What I'm getting at though is that for whatever reason, I didn't much care for the Varvatos uh, or Varvatos line at that time. Fast forward a few years later and I start re-smelling them as I get into my fragrance journey. And I was like, wow, where was I when this thing came out? Oh my God. So uh, the, 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 yeah, anyways, I really, really like most of the Varvatos line now. And in fact, I freaking love a couple of their offerings. I really, really love, for what it is, uh, the Oud. I forget the exact name. I've got the bottle around here somewhere. I have the Oud. Um, yeah, and I, and I have some other samples and decants, this, that, and the other. And then I bought this about, uh, I want to say about maybe... Three months ago, I want to say, uh, two or three, something like that. It's been it's definitely been several, several weeks uh, since this came in, and I've already been wearing it a couple times. If you like tobacco, guys, if you like smoky, if you like a little bit of leather with your scent and a lot of depth, this has so much going on that's not at first apparent. You have to let it start to dry down, and as it opens up and develops, this is just absolutely sensational. It's it's so freaking head and shoulders above a lot of the other houses' tobacco offerings that it just begs credulity. I don't know what they're all doing, but this guy, if nothing else, Varvados has the freaking balls to say, you know what? I'm going to put out some really interesting, dark, thick, rich, uh, cut, I don't say cutting edge, um, Juice that is going to sort of shake things up, disrupt the scene. Uh, I'm going to put some ingredients that I'm not afraid. I'm going to trust my noses to put things in here that aren't necessarily that common, uh, or at least not in this type of blend, things that kind of might offend certain people. I, this is just, this is so sexy, 
sensuous, sophisticated, noir, dark. You know, when people say this is dirty, don't think of it as dirty like a hobo. I don't know why people say the most inane, trite, stupid things online. Who would want to smell like a hobo anyway or some homeless person? I mean, no disrespect to the homeless, but I think we're all grown up enough to know, with all due respect, that if you're saying I want my fragrance a little dirty, you're not actually referring to dirty like a hobo. You're clearly talking fragrance parlance, and you're talking about dirty in the sense of a dark, earthy, pungent, leathery, oody tobacco with some rough edges, maybe a little metallic, mineral going on there. We're not talking about smelling like you haven't bathed in, in six months. No one in their right freaking adult mind is thinking like that. So for the love of God, I am begging you, Fracom, stop talking or typing such ridiculous crap online like that. Like, oh, so-and-so says it was dirty. I don't get dirty from here. It smells sophisticated. Well, no shit, Sherlock. No one said it's supposed to smell like a hobo. It's dirty for a sophisticated fragrance. End of story. I think we're all grown up enough to know that no one means that. So all due respect, guys, I really wish a lot of Fratcom would just grow up a little bit and stop using ridiculous jargon like that. No one, I wouldn't buy a fragrance that smelled like a hobo or like I hadn't taken a bath in 18 weeks. I wouldn't buy it and I wouldn't recommend anyone in the right mind uh, to buy something like that. It's ridiculous. So when someone says this is a dirty fragrance, I think we're adult enough to know they don't mean smells like a hobo, smells like an armpit, smells like an ass. It sm <laughs> smells like something a little bit raw, a little bit dark, a little bit uh, tainted, you know, a fetid, fecund. It smells leathery, it smells uncured or overripe. These are, these are, these are ways that we can talk about fragrance and descriptor, descriptors and descriptive vocabulary. So let's all kind of use the gray mass between our, our earlobes and let's talk more uh, informed. Okay, that mini rant preach session over. <laughs> let's look at the notes on here before we uh, wrap it up because I, I have another live cast to do after this. And yeah, so many fragrances to review, guys. I'm serious. It's it's just almost pathetic, but I've got so, so many fragrances. I don't know where I'm going to get the time of day to do them all, but we'll see. Bit by bit, day by day. Where, where is my? I've got a huge monitor. Uh, it's just ginormous. I'm trying to find the right tab. Okay. Is that it? There it is. Okay. Here we go. Okay, this dropped back in 2015, so it's just about four years old. It's not, not even four years old yet, technically, but we're getting there. It's almost four years old. It dropped actually September of 2015. I don't, yeah, the nose on this is one of my favorite noses out there. Rodrigo Flores Rue. Guys, I'm not gonna go into, I'm not gonna delve or waste time in that. Get in, get on for granted or base notes. Check out Rodrigo Flores Rue's. Resume, you'll find some really high-level gems. Uh, this guy really, really knows his stuff. Um, this was supposed to be inspired by the designer, John Barbados or Barbatos. Their return to Detroit. If you'll pardon me, I'm going to grab a sip of my hot, delicious uh, cappuccino. Oh my God, it's heaven on earth. Anyway, sorry, I, I'm a coffee head through and through. I do like green tea a lot as well. And I like all kinds of teas in general, but coffee, that's my go-to. Okay, so the blurb is intended for rebellious men who think outside the conventional framework. Individuals who march to the beat of their own drum and are not followers. It is advertised by the slogan, from darkness comes light. I like that. Uh, the composition of smoky oriental woody with sweet tobacco mixed with central resinous woods. God, I love woods and, and fragrance. And I like everything in here, basically. I love everything in here. It, it, it opens with the chords of Jamaican rum, Cuban sugarcane, Davana, which gives an often sort of a, a rich sort of herbal, slightly sweet, very smoky, resinous type 
accord or smell or scent, if you will. Uh, it also can smell a little bit like certain slightly smoky woods. But uh, go online and, and research Davana if you want. Cardamom, I love cardamom. Clary sage, I'm not a huge fan of clary sage, if I'm brutally honest, but I don't mind it. It's not like a turn off. I'm just not a huge clary sage guy. Heart includes black leather, yes, sir, fur resin, nutmeg, pepper, and styrax. Akigala wood, tobacco leaf, Mexican black vanilla, whatever that is, but I'll take it. Castorium, they misspelled it as Castorium. Wake up for Grantica. <laughs> Sorry, I love you for Grantica. Please don't ban me. Just kidding, but it is misspelled, all due respect. It should say castorium. Castorium is not a word that I'm familiar, as far as I know. Balmy wood, whatever the hell that means. Uh, balmy nights, balmy days, balmy temperature, balmy wood, okay. Juniper are in the base. I do like me some juniper. Okay, and it goes on to blah, 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 blah. And it is available in a 75 and 125 mils EDT. Now, I'm going to give you guys a little word of advice from old Esteban, Esteban here. Not that it matters because we're all going to do what we're going to do anyway. But if you can take my little two cents uh, and put that to heart, put that to mind. This has come under a lot of fire and line saying that the juice is weak and the scent doesn't last and blah, blah, blah. And, and you know, I've been hearing that about the Varvados line so long. It's almost like a gospel record that just, that just never stops like it's on loot right Varvinos is weak Varvinos doesn't last the smell doesn't last it's weak it's you know and after a while you start to believe that stuff without let me qualify this with let me qualify this asterisk without even trying it yourself so here's what i found for dark rebel while the scent is a little bit on the weak side that's a fact Sorry, John, if you're watching or listening, I doubt it. <laughs> it is not nearly as weak as I thought. Let me explain. A while back, I thought I sprayed it on. It's about maybe 30 minutes till blast off, which means leaving to work. And I and by the time, 30 to 45 minutes, and by the time it was time to leave, I thought, I'm not really smelling it that strongly on me. I did I did smell it. But it wasn't just like coming off me. So I thought, you know what? I'll give myself a whole nother blast. Boop, 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 boop. Went to work. And I'm going to swear to God. I mean, I shouldn't say that. But pr I promise you, hand over heart, you know, Boy Scouts, honor and all that. Uh, not a Boy Scout. I'm just saying. Um, that stuff lasted on me until the next day. I... I kid you not, it lasts on clothing probably 10 times longer than on skin. And even on the skin, it lasted probably close to two or three times longer than the first initial blast of spray. So, guys, if you need to get this thing up to, to speed, like you're looking, you need seven to nine hours of coverage or, God forbid, 12 hours. If, you, if you're one of those guys that works 12-hour shifts, some of us do, some of us don't. Uh, just lay down the law, man. Just just go cray cray. Give yourself a, a nice 20 spritzes. Make sure you get four to six spritzes on the shirt or clothing itself. Make sure that all the rest go to hot target zones like the base of the neck, chest region. I'm talking about on skin, right? Uh, not the armpit itself, but close to the armpit. That's a good sensitive area right here. This, uh, base of the elbow or these joint or the joint elbow joint is back of the neck and i promise you brother and sister if there's any women that rock this scent more power to you this is very very freaking masculine but i i maybe some women could pull it off and i might even think it's freaking sexy and hot um i challenge you to prove to me that by overspraying this scent you you won't be blown away by the performance it will and trust me, don't forget that we go uh, as um, anosmic, which means that after a few hours, we are not smelling a fragrance or we're not smelling it that strongly. I guarantee the majority of people, your coworkers, your friends, your lover, your boyfriend, girlfriend, partner, whatever you want to call it, your significant other, 
they will they will be smelling you like you cannot believe. I mean, they, they will smell it. Trust me. They won't have to get it right on you either to smell it. They will, they will get it. They will smell it. And uh, if you over spray this to a ridiculous extreme, you're going to probably turn some people off, especially in the summer and maybe even in the winter, fall and spring. So if you're going to wear this in warmer climates, I would definitely say, please, for the love of God, err on the side of modesty six to eight sprays max with this thing even 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 if it's weaker and you probably want to go four to four to five and see how it goes and then for next time you can you know learn from that make changes accordingly and you can always take a smaller size or a decant with you if you absolutely need to respray down the road like four or five hours later i get it we've all i've been there we've all been there now let's talk pricing you can get this bad boy 100 freaking mils for, I think, as little as, let me make sure I'm not going to just pull a number out of my, you know, you know what, but yeah. Oh, and I said 100 mils. It's over, I think it's just over 100 mils, is it? I think it's, yeah, my bad, guys. It's 125. I misspoke. This is 125 mils. Thank you, John, for giving me 25 to 7 to 50 mils extra than a lot of the other guys I'm not going to name right now. You know, guys, and, and while I'm before I wrap this session up, let me feel what you guys think about. Oh, before I get off that, okay, let me let me finish this. You can get this, guys, for 33. <laughs> 33.79. In a travel deluxe refillable travel spray box set that is freaking gorgeous at fragrancenet.com with a 35% coupon off. You can get this for $33.79. And if you add, I think, one or two more fragrances to the cart, you will literally get free shipping. Yes, you, yes, you heard it right. Free shipping in the U.S. I'm not sure about Canada or elsewhere. Guys, th this alone was at least an eighty to a one hundred dollar bottle when it back when it dropped in uh, twenty fifteen in the department retail stores. It was at least eighty. It might have been more than that, but it was at least eighty. You're getting a travel box right now, fragrance net for thirty three seventy nine. Are you freaking kidding me? Oh my god! Sorry for that. I apologize. Phone going haywire. Uh, just to wrap it up, the. Uh, travel spray is a 0.57 ounce, so a little over half an ounce there. That's quite a few mils to get you through the the day, the night, the vacation, whatever it is you may have to do. God, guys, what in the world? Good God almighty, the phone's got a mind of its own. Apologies for that. Uh, it was in, I think, vibrate mode and literally vibrated off my other chair. Okay. Anyhow... So $33.79 um, is just redonkulously, ridiculously cheap for a what I consider, guys, one of the finest tobacco-based scents in the world. Now, it may not be quite as rarefied as a real, real high-dollar $200 bottle of juice or $400 bottle of juice. I promise you, overall, it can absolutely hold its own and go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. The only areas that's not going to quite come out ahead, it's not going to have quite as much siage as the best of those. It's not going to have nearly as much longevity as the best of those. It's not going to be quite as resinous as the best of those. And it may not smell quite as natural or, or high, super uber high shelf uh, ingredients as some of those. But I promise you, it can basically hold its own against 97 and 98% of of all of them, you know, even the big boys, even the uber, uber elite. So for what for what it's worth to anyone out there watching, if you've been on the fence, please buy a sample or a decant. Guys, for $33, really? You can't buy this. You could give it away if you don't like it or sell decants on eBay or whatever you want to do as far as that goes. Let me get back to my live page, make sure what's going on here. Jerry D says that Dark Rebel lasts six hours in me. It's good. Yeah, I love the rum note in this, Jerry. It's, it's really, really phenomenal. 
Uh, it's, yeah, it has that nice boozy, rummy accord in here. Uh, it's it's got a little bit of a uh, slightly burnt out cigar smell in here, but also that's mixing with the cigar leaf. Uh, all those other little delicious herbs and seasonings and spices in there, like nutmeg and. There's almost like a plum note. Is it me or is there like a weird dark berry or plum accord in here? I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but there seems to be like a plummy type of chord in here. There's that Akigala wood. It's just, dude, this is, <laughs> this is absolutely interstellar galactic awesomeness in a bottle. I hats off to John Varvatos and to uh, Rodrigo Flores Ruth. Now that's going to end it as far as my official or unofficial review of this wonderful juice. I want to ask you guys a question before I wrap this session. It's kind of, okay, let me say it this way. As we get more and more into niche houses and really, really expensive, for those of us that can afford it or choose to even get decants or samples or what have you, or get the hookup uh, from really, really top tiered uh, niche and indie houses, what is your feeling on the fact that many of these guys are are asking astronautical, and that's a joke on the word astronaut because you know they're outer space instead of astronomical. Don't you think I'm actually mincing words there? But what's your you guys' feelings on so a lot of these niche and indie houses asking for uh, anywhere from seventy? to $125, let's say, for a 30 mils bottle of juice. I want you guys to do the math on that for a second. That's just staggeringly expensive. That's, that's just orders of magnitude more expensive, probably even than most of Tom Ford's fragrances i kid you not you, you can look at a tom ford bottle and compare what they're asking even mfk maison francis Kurjan, uh de paris france or, or france if you don't speak french or don't like french authentic pronunciation i don't know why you wouldn't but the point is guys i'm kind of offended by that it kind of doesn't sit well with me because at the end of the day, I have a really good idea what fragrance ingredients cost. And I know I know on the one hand, it's not cheap. Okay, let me get that clear. I know they're not cheap. And I know that it's economies of scale. And I know that I can buy one uh, uh, cedar absolute, right? Like our oud absolute or, or, or pine resin absolute. And I know the quality is going to vary. If, if, if I buy at this level or I buy at this level or I buy at this level, Okay, fine. The quality is going to vary a little bit, uh, maybe even a lot. But how much the end consumer is going to actually detect that, you know, once it's blended into the ingredients of all these other things, you're going to be using some great ingredients here and some slightly cheaper, uh, easier to call ingredients off the shelf over here. And then as you blend the matrix, it, even someone with my nose, which I consider quite refined, Am I going to come along and smell that and say, oh, my God, they used uh, they used the special essence d'absolue from Grasse, the one that's only uh, Givaudan makes, and it cost uh, $1,500 a dram. And I can smell it. Oh, my God, it's incredible. And only for that reason, I'm going to pay $1,000 for half an ounce. It, it, I'm sorry. I'm not buying that for a dollar. You can buy it all you want. I, I'll sell you all that you want. I'm not buying that. I, it's, I think it's highly offensive because at the end of the day, while I'm not begrudging someone as sort of a pretty fair capitalist at heart, I get it, dude. You're an artist. You can ask what you want, sell for what you want. If the market will pay, bravo. Bravo. Bravissimo. I don't think it's fair, though, to the consumer. I don't feel like it's uh, justified. I don't think it's authentic in the sense that it feels very artificial to me. I'll give you an example. I'll give you a really good example. You might make the fair argument that Teslas are expensive. And I might say, sure, they're a little bit expensive compared to 
uh, a brand new Civic or a brand new Accord or a brand new Camry or a brand new Ford, whatever. And, and, and that's fair and true. Are they necessarily economies of scale more expensive than a BMW or an Audi? Uh, the Model 3 is really even the base model is less expensive, the Tesla Model 3, than an Acura, than a fully decked out, loaded. I don't know, whichever Acura out there is the most expensive, not the NSX. I'm not talking about that. My point is there's economies of scale. Now, if Tesla came out and said, sight on scene, here's my Model 3, and I'm asking $250,000, <laughs> I think we'd have a right and a duty to puke in a bucket and say, no freaking way. I will never buy your car. You know, you, you ridiculous scum of the earth, uh, uh, you know, a-hole, because that's selfishness. Just That's just unbridled, arrogant selfishness. And so... <laughs> That brings me back to my point. I just don't think it's fair for even an artiste nose to say, oh, here's my uh, 20 mils bottle, and I'm only asking for $200. I'm only asking for 200 bucks for my delicious 20 mils bottle. I Look, dude, if you're rich, you're uber rich, fantastic. Go buy, buy a Bugatti, buy a Chiron, buy, buy a skyscraper. That's not the other 99% of us. And even, even the rather well-to-do and wealthy would not feel comfortable paying two to $300 for something this size. And I'm telling you guys, a lot of these niche indie houses, that's what they're doing. I find it incredibly irritating, disingenuous. To me, it's just flat out unbridled avarice. Let me know what you guys think. Am I right or am I wrong? Do I have no business saying that? They're an artist that can charge whatever they want. Look, I'm not saying it should be a law. I get it. You're an artist. You, you made it. You bought top shelf ingredients. You blended it. You're trying to impress somebody. I don't know yourself and some rich guy that you know or gal. At the end of the day, let's be real. Anyone can buy a really decent level clone. Usually there might be a few exceptions, right? for let's say around 60 to 100 dollars would you guys agree so if and i'm not saying it's as good that's not the point my only point is this if a house can produce a fantastic perfume for let's say 150 dollars that's quite a bit of scratch for most people right but I don't really necessarily mind occasionally paying $150 if I get something that's at least about as good as this and about as big. This is, again, 125 mils. Usually I'm going to expect a 100 mils bottle. If it's world class, if it uses top shelf ingredients, the CIs is spectacular. It radiates all day. Um, enough. You know, we all have our, our different opinion for how stringent that you have to be for that. If it smells fantastic, smells divine, doesn't smell like a copycat of anyone else, and you just freaking identify with that scent, it just makes your day, it makes your night. Hopefully, hopefully your friends, loved ones are going to say, oh, my God, it smells freaking incredible. I feel like I'm getting my money's worth. I don't feel like I'm being ripped off, right? But, it, but in turn, if you ask me to buy something like this, no offense to Pierre Cardon, uh, Centaur, which which is a fine little throwback cologne, or and I'll get into this in the, in, in a future review. But if you ask me to to, to buy something like this for four hundred dollars, I say you're out of your freaking GD mind, right? It, it, it's disingenuous. It's avarice, unbridled, and and you've got to be having taken stupid pills to actually shell out four to six hundred dollars on a bottle like this. I almost don't care what's in it. I don't tell. I don't care if you tell me that the oud has been cultivated in uh, the most organic way. You know, it is a, a three types of hood from uh, um, Cambodia, from uh, Laos, from Vietnam, and it has woods from India. And uh, it was mixed over a period of 10 years. I, I, I don't think, with all the respect, that I would ever freaking pay you four to 600 freaking dollars for this. I wouldn't. I know there's idiots out there that would, and I probably sound like a hater. <laughs> but honestly, in all honesty, 
What do you guys think about pricing pricing structure right now going on with a lot of these indie um, and niche houses? I'm not talking about standard run of the mills. Um, who, who am I thinking of? I'm not talking about Creed. I'm not talking about uh, Tom Ford. I'm talking about indie, niche, and foreign houses that are asking for just ginormous sums of money, often for bottles as small as 30 to 50 mils. I rant over. I think it's ridiculous. Let me know, guys, your thoughts. Chime in. I'm going to field questions for about five minutes, and then we're going to wrap. I'm going to start reading some comments out, guys. And I apologize. I, my glasses are broken, so I'm having to get really close to my ginormous monitor to read some of the fragrances. Not trying to get all personal with you. <laughs> um, let's see. Stefan says, cool live stream, bro. Thank you so much, Stefan, for joining me here tonight and tuning in, as well as Jerry D. Uh, Flex, uh, is it Mentalo or Mentayo? Uh, I'm going to go with Mentalo for now, which sounds more Italian, but if it's Mentayo, I fully understand. I am Hispanic and part Italian as well. I'm, I'm actually United Nations, man. I got so much up in me, it's not even fine. <laughs> um, but, um, Flex says you're paying for the brand for the for those of us who know it's just it, it it's ridiculous, but to the layman who just wants the brand, yeah, fair enough. Stefan says the ability to acquire fragrance is important. It becomes a wealth gap thing rather than true the true art and integrity. Uh, integrity is confused for greed sometimes. Low, yep. Well, I won't spend more than a fort than a deuce for a frag. Wow. Are you saying a $20 bill, Jerry? If that's true, man, you are rocking it cheap style. More power to you, bro. Oh, <laughs> okay. And now Jerry says 250 tops. Okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, it better be uber royal juice, man, at the 250 level. It better just freaking get my socks off, my rocks off. Um, I'd rather... <laughs> Stefan says I'd rather drop a deuce... <laughs> in the toilet then drop one on a 50 <laughs> and drop one on a 50 mils yeah man seriously dude i don't mind a 50 mil so much it's all about price structure if you're gonna sell me a 50 mils make it affordable for the i mean it doesn't have to be cheap right it has to be affordable for what it is and for what the going rate is if that makes sense don't just tell me oh my 50 mils is better than every other house's 50 mils and that's why i'm asking double that's that, that's ridiculous man move on next i'm not gonna do it uh, someone else will um cj young jr thanks cj for joining in on the live stream he says to me it's all a get rich squeeze get rich quick scheme probably cj it's ironic that i would actually kind of slightly disagree um, it, it, to your point, of course, they're trying to make a lot of money back and, and cover all their costs and, and, and drive that hot new Tesla or Ferrari or Porsche or Mercedes or whatever, the, or, or whatever it is they want to drive. I think to some of, uh, um, Stefan's and Jerry's points earlier, there are cases guys where they are using Uber. And I mean, I mean, ingredients that are so freaking ridiculously expensive, even for their standards, that it just boggles the mind. But that's another point I'm trying to make here tonight in the live stream. How, let's say, let, let's be fair and say they really did cost them an arm and a leg to make that fragrance. Like it was just like they spent Lamborghini Rolls Royce money to make it, right? The ingredients cost like a thousand times more than almost any other house. But then my question then becomes, isn't that a gross, obvious law of diminishing returns where even by their own standards, our standards, um, any other nose of standards out there, right? You could smell that frag, that fragrance and say, while it is really, really good, it's not necessarily any better than a Creed or a Tom Ford. So then my question is, why would you spend that much on that fragrance? It's a lovely idea. It's a very artistic I admire the lofty goals and integrity to get there. 
I really don't think it's necessary. And furthermore, um, I think it just pr pretty much kills sales at that point. I mean, how many of us on this planet are really going to pull the trigger on a thousand dollar fragrance? And I know there's plenty of wealthy people out there. It's not my point. I think you can make money all day in this business if you are only selling to the rich. And you can afford to make really, really expensive concoctions, right? And you're going to make all your money back because your house is so small, so lean and mean, there's so little overhead. You are going to make a lot of money as the main designer and the nose is going to make quite a bit of money. And your, your lead main foundation team are going to actually make a really nice living. That's about it. But I think that's only if you're marketing and selling to the rich only. I think the minute you think you're, you're marketing to the masses, and then you try to up the ante and say, I'm going to sell uh, a, a, you know, a Lamborghini. I don't mean entry-level Lambo. I mean like, like a three off, like a 30 off, a 100 off, a thousand tops. Um, I think you've pretty much left the mass market for dead at that point. And I'm not saying houses can't ma make something for here and something for here. There are houses that do it. There are houses that have done it. And there are houses that probably always will do it. I think, though, my gut instinct tells me you kind of have to pick your poison in this game if you're going to be in it for the long haul, actually, especially if you have shareholders. It's one thing if you're just independent and you've got your own house, you've got your own brand. That's one thing. If you're answering to shareholders and you're having, having to actually make you know Wall Street happy and your end users happy, that's a whole nother ball of wax. Uh, yeah, it's just incredibly complicated at that point. I'll read a few more comments here, guys. I'll, I'll field one or two more questions, then we're going to wrap for the night. Starting to get a little bit late, and I've got a few more uh, thing, uh, research projects to do. Um, Jerry says the new Creed Cologne is not worth the cash, in my opinion. Yeah, I heard about that one, Jerry. I have not actually smelled it yet. I, I will probably eventually get my nose on it. 200. He says, what do you think about Dark Rebel compared to other cheap dark fragrances in that category? I think Dark Rebel, uh, Stefan, is head and shoulders above most other, by far. I think it's a light, it's light years ahead of most other um, uh, similar noir uh, fragrances, sort of in the same price point. I think it's very unique. I think it's very, very rich and heady. There's a lot going on in this fragrance. Again, this was the fragrance that we were reviewing earlier. If you missed the, the live cast, you can rewind once I wrap and, and watch that again. Um, I think I think Dark Rebel is almost niche. I could not agree more, Jerry. I think Dark Rebel is light years beyond most designer fodder. No offense to the design uh, game. I love a lot of, there's a lot of designers I love, but I think Dark Rebel, and I do think the House of Varvatos or Varvatos, you want to say it more like the Greeks, is um, way more niche and independent-minded for a design house. And I think it affords them a great degree of uniqueness um, that a lot of the houses simply don't have because they're just not as brave and they don't have the balls to actually make fragrances that sort of um, possibly divisive or strong character, if you will. You know, most of our Vedas of stuff has a very strong, heady character that some people are a little bit scared of. Some people are a little bit afraid to rock scents that might rock the waters a little bit, you know, rock the boat. Don't rock the boat, baby. Rock the boat. Rock the boat. Um, let's see. As Stefan says, I've heard great things about Dark Rail, where rider didn't pick it up, though. My Uncle Noir. I will tell you, Stefan, that unfortunately, Ancre Noir, as much as I loved it, and you can feel free to go back and watch my older review, I stopped using it entirely, and I'll tell you why. I love the smell. Don't get me wrong. I love the scent. But Ancre Noir evaporates on my skin literally in one hour flat. It, it's, it's all but gone. There is a mild skin scent solution left over. And I would say it's almost a skin scent after just 30 minutes. And I, I just, I can't wrap my head around a fragrance. I do still rock the other two, the Sport and the uh, Extreme. 
I know, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be giving away my Encre Noir to someone that I don't like in the future because uh, it literally has zero longevity. That's just on my skin. I can't speak for other people, but on my skin, the original Encre Noir has zero longevity. It's it's a laughing stock of longevity. Smell it. Smell itself is really good. It's got that rich, slightly smoky, uh, cedary type vetiver thing going on. It's really, really lovely. I wish they could have answered and addressed just some basic longevity issues, which they didn't, but I digress. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Yeah, and I, I probably will be getting my nose or my, my, my grubby little hands on uh, Rebel Rider here soon. I do like me some leather fragrances for sure. Yeah, the plum and those are awesome. I, I think John must like plum because I, I'm almost getting a plummy type of cord uh, in this. I mean, call me a liar, but to me, there's a hidden plum accord in here that I think they're not listing. Uh, maybe I'm just imagining it, but to me, it's in there at least a little bit. Um, yeah, the original Aquino Noir guys, to me, the longevity is just an absolute joke. Uh, the smell itself is fantastic. If it just stuck around longer, I'd be all over it like an Alabama tick on a on some kind of animal. <laughs> uh, not that I live in Alabama, but uh, it's just an old silly saying. But uh, I like Alabama. Just haven't been there in a long time. Uh, Okay, any more questions to fill or statements I've missed? Let's see. Da, da, da. I'm not really seeing anything else. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up, guys. I think I don't see too many more questions or serious statements coming down the pipeline. Uh, get them in if you can. This is about the last 60 seconds, and then we're going to wrap. Coming up in the near future, if I haven't already done it, um, let's see. Let me make sure. I think I've already reviewed this guy, um, a 902. If I haven't, let me make sure that I. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bear with me for a millisecond. Check my catalog of. Okay, I did Vanilla and Tobacco. I did Hilda Sol Soliani, Bison Monolab, Slight My Fire, Balthazar Luis, The Sonk. Uh, okay. I'm not seeing it. That's not a good sign. I mean, it's not a bad sign. Uh, let's see. Wow, it looks like I did not get it out there. Thought I had. Hmm. Okay, anyways, that's gonna. We'll be probably looking at this next, guys. This is 902 from a bar, uh, Bon Parfumeur, Paris. It's Armagnac, Tabac Blonde, and Canel, um, which is, yeah, like caramel. And Armagnac is like cognac. This is really, really, really a nice, sublime, sophisticated, soft scent. But I'm not going to say anything more than that. Tune in for the next probable life cast, and we'll take a look at that fantastic Parisian scent from France. Uh, Jerry D says he just got a Guerlain Vetiver today, and that's damn good. Yeah, I believe it, dude. Uh, Guerlain uh, makes a lot of phenomenal scents, some better than others, and the house is not to everyone's perfect taste, but then no one's is, so. Uh, Jerry, I'll pass then. I'll check out where I think. <laughs> some Reynolds later, bro. It's hilarious. Stefan said, wrap it up with some Reynolds later, bro. It's very cool. Very nice. Guys, it's really been a pleasure here tonight. I was shocked to see so many come in on the live feed, on the live cast. It's been a pleasure. And I might I might also, well, shout out to all these new faces that have not previously joined me on my channel, on my live cast. Thank you so much. 
CJ, Jerry, Stefan, and Flex. And if I'm missing anyone else out there, my sincerest apologies. And to all my regular homies and home home girls, join me later when this thing hits the regular post as you weren't here on the live feed. So sorry, I did give a blast out. Don't say I didn't give a word out. I did give a shout out there with about 20 minutes of uh, or 15 minutes of prep time, eh, maybe 10. But at any rate, that's going to do it, guys. Signing off. Thank you so much. Love you guys. Remember, spray often, spray well. Live life on your terms, not someone else's life's too short. Peace. Booyah.